Well, I just finished recording this video and then I realized that my microphone was not turned on, so we gotta do it again. But here we go. Basically, we have uh, about five, six, or seven hours of footage compressed into what's that, eight minutes? So I'm gonna, it's like a quick time lapse edit of the highlights. So I'm just gonna quickly run through that on the video and I'm just gonna talk over it. I'm gonna ramble. If you don't wanna listen to me talking, just mute it. I understand. I talk, I talk too much sometimes, but. I'm just going to talk just to give you an idea of what's going on and uh, hopefully give you uh, some some useful tips for how to do this and anything else you want to see, if you want to break anything down from this tutorial, just let me know in the comments. We'll just make another tutorial, all right? Of course, right from the beginning, the first thing we do is always we delete the default cube and we're using reference in the background from Google, from Google just a blueprint. And then we're using a plane with some subdivision surface uh, to just kind of shape out the bottom of the shoe or the footprint of the shoe, the sole, the base of the shoe, whatever you want to call that. Then we have to go to side view and to kind of lift up the front or the, the front part of the shoe then to get that little curvy shape. And we're going to extrude that to create the rest of the base of the shoe. Okay, and we have to line some of the vertices, get the shape right and everything. Now we're using a loop cut that goes around this base of the shoe and we're going to turn that into this little black line that you can see that goes around the shoe. It's in the blueprint. It's like a little piece of rubber tape to the rest of the tape around the entire base of the shoe. Then we go to the back, we take some faces and we duplicate them, use some uh, subdivision and use some solidify just to add some thickness. It's like a piece of rubber which is glued to the back. Uh, and there's there's a logo on this, it says Converse All-Star. We're gonna make that later using some UV uh, UV mapping, which is gonna make a little decal just painted on there. And then we just have to line this so it just it runs around the surface very smoothly. We extrude it again, add some uh, loop cuts just to make the subdivision, just to make the edges a little bit tighter and whatnot. But uh, we're gonna leave that there for later. And then the next thing we do is we add a loop cut to the top of this base and we have to extrude it inwards a little bit because it's like a little edge that goes around the base of the shoe. It's, a little, it's like a sharp little sharp little edge and then the top part is a little bit narrower than the rest of the base of the shoe, okay? Now on the front, we're doing the same thing essentially that we did in the back with that little piece of rubber glue to the back, but it has to be around the, the tip of the shoe, around the front part of the shoe. So uh, this is going to have some bumps which we're going to create later, but... Uh, uh, it's basically the same thing. We just extrude it, uh, we duplicate it, separate the new object, extrude it, and then add some thickness and just adjust the shape so it's a little bit more round and natural. And we just leave that there. Then we're going to extrude some more faces from the top, and we're going to use those to make this other little black piece of rubber that runs around the shoe. And uh, I see we changed the colors here a little bit, but then we're going to model out the toe cap, which is essentially just a plane with subdivision surface, top view. I can't really tell you much about this. You, it is what it is. So uh, once we shape that out, we're gonna that's, uh, we're gonna extrude it out to add some thickness to that, and we're gonna use some of the edges from that toe cap, to extrude them backwards and shape out the tongue of the shoe, right? Uh, so which is the part that's underneath the shoelaces. Then we're using some proportional editing to fit it into shape according to the blueprint and all that, so it looks a little bit more natural and organic. And once we finish that, we're gonna move on to the body of the shoe or the main part of the canvas that wraps around your foot when you wear the shoe. So we're gonna go to side view, use a plane, extrude it out according to the blueprint, align it with everything and just use some loop cuts and try to keep the topology correct and everything. The reason we need to pay special attention to the topology is because we're gonna be creating some holes uh, in this canvas uh, later on. So that uh, so we don't wanna use booleans, we wanna keep clean holes. So we're gonna have to be very, uh, we have to, have to make sure that everything is made out of quads here and that we don't want no triangles or ingons or anything like that. But now we added some uh, some thickness of this shape, and we have to make sure it, we can tuck in into the base of the shoe. We can have to we have to kind of glue it in there, and we also focus on the other side. We can basically just duplicate the entire uh, left side of the shoe onto the other side, mirror it, and just kind of fit it correctly according to whatever the shape on the other side is like. And here we're just filling some of the gaps that we have left between two parts. Now again, some uh, uh, we add some thickness of the tongue of the shoe, and then uh, we have pretty much the base of the, the body of the shoe is pretty much completed. Over here, we're insetting two faces at a time and turning them into circles with loop tools. And then we're deleting them so that they, all we have left is a circular hole. Right? I have a separate tutorial of how to do that. Go check that out. Um, but it's a very useful way to make some uh, holes in an organic object without having any kind of topology issues or shading issues. We're definitely avoiding booleans. Booleans are a terrible idea in this case. Well, they're not, they, they can work out fine, but they're pretty destructive, so we, we want to avoid them. But once we have the holes, we're going to shape out these little eyelets using just a simple circle and just extruding it out. And we're going to place them into every individual hole. Now, this was pretty uh, tricky because we have to get the right angle. We have to, have, we have to make sure that the rotation of the eyelet is exactly the same as every hole, right? So there's a special technique that we use for that. I also made another video for that where we add some empties, align them with our view according to the hole, right? And then we just copy the rotation from the empty onto the eyelet. So we make sure that it fits into the hole perfectly. And in the back, we're making this other little shape that you can see, nothing special to say about this. Just using a plane and some subdivision surface and some solidity to just kind of shape out this little piece that holds the back together. 
Now we're adding a loop cut all the way around the, the body of the shoe to add this little separation between the two sides of the canvas, the inner side and the other side, we're using a circle with a whole bunch of subdivisions. And then we're going to add a shrink wrap modifier to that so that we can just kind of tape it or glue it onto the uh, surface of the shoe on the side. And it's going to have another little logo, which is Converse and All Star and all this different stuff. But uh, we want to retain that circular shape when we glue it onto the surface. Now, over here, this is where things get pretty interesting and uh, tricky. I honestly didn't think this would work, but it turned out pretty good. We're using a plane to manually shape out... Uh, shape out the, the shoelaces. Now I know what you're thinking, probably the first idea that came to your mind when you're thinking about how to make shoelaces will be to use a curve, uh, run it through all the eyelets and wrap it around the shoe correctly and then use an array modifier with some other object to go and, and finish off the shoelaces. But that wouldn't work out well too, too, uh, uh, over here because we, would have to, we wouldn't have much control over how the shoelaces are turned. So we just, the only other way was to just make it manually, right? So that's what we did. And this was a, a big pain in the ass. It took forever to do and it was very repetitive. And honestly, I really didn't enjoy doing it, but the result turned out phenomenal. So I'm going to show you guys later. Uh, in a minute, you're going to see how it turned out. We had to pay special attention to the to the uh, normal orientation to make sure that the, thick, the, the solidify modifier would add thickness in the right direction. But anyway, now we're using a curve or we're using some vertices to shape out a curve using a shrimp a shrink wrap modifier to make sure that curve is perfectly aligned with the surface. And we're going to use that to make some stitches. One more time, I made a separate tutorial for that. If you want to learn how to make some stitches, uh, go check that video out. But we're going to leave that over here and then we're going to manually shape out every single, uh, every uh, every individual stitch or just one single uh, stitch actually. And then we're going to duplicate that because we have two rows of stitches going uh, on every part where there's a stitch, right? And then we use an array modifier. And this is a simple array curve modifier uh, trick that we just we just use to kind of wrap, out, wrap, wrap these stitches around wherever they need to be on the shoe, right? So we finished those off and now our model is pretty much completed. You can see the wireframe view here and you can see that everything fits pretty uh, pretty well. Then we moved on to the bottom of the shoe or the yeah, the yeah, the underside of the shoe. And we again we just manually model out everything here. The topology was absolutely atrocious. We used a lot of booleans. I didn't care about the polygon count. I didn't care about any of that. I just manually modeled everything out and it turned out pretty good. So if you were to look at the model inspected topology, you would probably throw up, but luckily you're not going to do that, so I can get away with it this time. Now we're shaping out some more bumpy surfaces here. And we're going to bake these little uh, ridges that I created here onto another plane so that it turns out that we're going to bake it as a normal map, right? And then we can use those uh, to, to make some bumpy surfaces on other parts of the shoe without actually modeling them. The same thing we're doing here with this little uh, grid pattern. As you can see, we put those on the front of the shoe there. Now here's another little trick. Maybe I'll make a separate tutorial for that to make the canvas look a little bit more realistic. We had to use some sculpting to kind of form the bumps and the bends on this, on the kind of on the fabric surface, right? The texture itself did not do the trick. Now over here we have some UV unwrapping and UV mapping to put this little sticker on the circular shape that we made. And then we're just adding a normal map for a canvas on the side of the shoe. It doesn't have any normal map, it doesn't have any actual image, the texture, it's just a color. And then on the back here, finally, we have this thing that we discussed earlier. We're using some more UV mapping to place this little Converse All-Star logo on the back of the shoe. We're finishing off some more of the basic materials, just a metallic shape. Over here we have, as I said, a simple texture, a normal map on the shoelaces. And just a few more material, uh, color materials like the red and the blue lines around there. Over here you can set the color to anything that you want on this uh, on this texture for the canvas. Because as I said, there's no image texture, just a plain, just a normal map and that's it. So we can change it to any color we want, but white Converse is the coolest, so we're just going to leave it at that. And now the last thing we have to do is set up a little bit of lighting, set up the camera, render the image, and we're good to go, right? Well, that was super fast. So if you guys want me to break down anything else from this video, let me know in the comments and also tell me what you want to see next.